Hey everyone, Chang here and welcome to my channel. This is the bare minimum algebra series. Now for today's topic, I actually struggled quite a bit to figure out how to cover this in a bare minimum way. Because even though we went through a lot of different operations, especially since we focused on integer, one of the common thing that we will encounter is word problems. So how do you translate a word problem? Now, there's a lot of nuances to that. There's actually, for lack of a better way to describe it, thousands, millions of different possibility based on the wording of the problem. Now that's the key, right? Since it's based on the wording of the problem, honestly, the best way is a full, basically English or whatever language comprehension of what the problem is asking. That's really the only way you can truly solve the word problem. Now, there are common words, common phrasing, common, I guess you could say, structure that we can look at. So for today's video, I'm going to focus on basically the equal sign, the plus, minus, multiplication, division, and variables. And what are some of the common words, hopefully, as shortcuts, for you to translate word problems into basic equation, and you can solve it that way. So let's begin with the first and foremost, the equal sign. All right, so the first one is the equal sign. Now, it doesn't mean that every time you see these words, it's guaranteed to be an equal sign. Once again, you need to understand the context of what the problem is asking. However, most of the time, if you see these words, it most likely can translate into an equal sign. Is, was, were, or, if you're lucky, and I definitely prefer it, they just use the word equal. So if you see any one of those in a word problem, once again, check the context, but most likely it represents an equal sign. All right, so the next one is fairly more complicated because there is so many different ways of stating this, but overall it's roughly the same. Now we're talking about addition. Addition usually means you have to be increasing or adding on or whatsoever. So we're looking for words that indicates basically in addition, something is being placed on, accumulated more, any of those kind of words, right? So most common is probably add, right? You have more than, so more than a number usually includes, you know, having a larger quantity. Of course, there's specialized one, you know, taller, you know, uh, accumulate, uh, increase, so on and so forth. So this is just an example. It doesn't mean that you know, just because it's not saying taller, doesn't mean add. And of course, we would always prefer, you know, something like plus, right? Because that is just as obvious of an indicator that it means addition. So just be very careful of these. These are only some example, but no matter what, you're looking for words with the context of it increasing, adding, doing something that makes the quantity larger. That is usually an indication that it is requiring you to add. All right, so the next one is subtraction. Now before, I can't believe I forgot this, uh, but just I added it just now how uh, sum is actually one of the most common words. So don't forget sum for addition. Anyways, the equivalence, not equivalence, a very similar word in relation to subtraction as sum is different. So you always see sum and difference usually side by side in terms of they would say, oh, what is the sum, the end product of an addition problem? The difference is the end product of a subtraction problem. So you would have difference, which is, you know, subtraction. You have subtract, you have less than. Of course, you have the special description of where you're taking away stuff, right? It's getting lesser, smaller, however you want to call it, right? So this is only, you know, one example shorter. You could say smaller, it could be less than, it could be any form that it looks like the quantity of something is getting reduced, right? So reduced might be one too. And then of course you have your standard minus. If they say minus, then it is quite obvious. Now, the addition and subtraction are the one that have a lot of potential different permutation, different words that could describe the same thing. Luckily to my understanding, and don't quote me on this, multiplication and division and all that stuff there are still a number of words, but it's actually not that bad. So let's go over multiplication next. All right, so let's talk about multiplication. Luckily for us, I believe there's only a few that is really common. And of course, then the other ones is specialized context, right? You have the product, 
all right, which is usually the indication that it is the end result of a multiplication. You have your times, right, times table, all those other lovely stuff. You have your multiply, you have your multiple and probably different variations of the same word, right? So those are the common ones that I've noticed in terms of just standard basic word problem, you know, not the ones where they're trying to make you basically take an English exam instead of a math exam because they write it in such a weird and fancy and very convoluted way. Right, so these are the four that I can think of and I'm sure there are a lot more, you can definitely put them in the comments, but be wary every time you see any of one of these words, it definitely indicates that you are multiplying. All right, so the last one in terms of just basic operation is your division and the most common one is probably quotient, which is basically the end product of a division. Then you have your divide, which is what I really hope they would phrase it with, just because so you know is divide. You have your split, usually in terms of talking about groups and you're breaking it up into equal groups, that usually indicates some form of division. And the last one is one that kind of scares me, uh, just because there is, of course, an infinite number of permutation, because it's mainly talking about almost like a multiplication of fraction, which can be division. So for example, you have something and you want a fifth of something or even two fifths of something, so on and so forth, right? It is multiplication, division kind of way, but mainly division and it's not fifth, right? It could be six, it could be hundredth, it could be seventh, it could be any number. That's why I want you to pay special attention to this. I don't think it's phrased all that much, but then if you see something like this, definitely know it does indicate some form of division or multiplication of a fraction, right? So there it is, you have your quotient, divide, split, and then your whatever indication of fraction it wants to use. The last one is the most common one, and it is variables. All right, so the last one is variable, and honestly, there is really no way, there's no list, there's really nothing I can really give you in regards to variable other than this. In the context of the problem, make sure you pay attention to the subject, and anything that indicates some unknown number, or some unknown quantity of something, right? If you notice that they use something like age, okay, that might be your variable. If they something like height, that might be your variable. If it's talking about this person's, I don't know, shoe size, right? Any sort of indication that you can actually measure or you can actually put a number value in it that most likely might be the variable of the word problem. But of course, it's based entirely on the context of the problem. So at that point, is there a shortcut? No, not really. However, just pay attention. If the word seems like it can be some measurable amount or it can indicate some unknown number, that is most likely your variable. All right, so what better way than to end the video with you know an example just to see where these words can come up. Now, I actually really like this problem because not only does it use a lot of the words that um, I was covering, but it is also dependent on your understanding of the word problem. So you need to understand the context of what it's asking. So here it is. Two times the larger of two consecutive integer is three more than three times the smaller integer. Find both integers. Now, there's a lot of things here and that's why I decided to, you know, just underline and box and all the other lovely stuff, the different words that can help us. First and foremost, we should find the variables because it's always best to know where to plug them in, so on and so forth. Out of this entire problem, the only one that could potentially mean some unknown number that we can work with is integers, right? It's talking about some integers. We don't know what the integers are, that's our unknown number. And even more important is the description of the integers. Two consecutive integers. Now, this is based entirely on the context of this problem, right? It's good to know what the word consecutive means. It means one after the other. So we know that we're working with some integer, right? And we're working with two consecutive of them. So let's just say right here, consecutive integers, right? And we're just gonna call it x, and because it's one after the other, x plus one, okay? There's definitely different ways of translating the problem, but I like it this way, just because it's more simpler, right? So we have that, and we have two times the larger of the consecutive numbers. So let's break it down this way. Two times larger, right? So luckily times is just, 
easily translate to multiplication. So two times larger of the two, uh, the two consecutive numbers. So out of the two consecutive numbers, the larger one is usually, well, you have x and x plus one. So x plus one should be the larger one. So we're gonna have two times x plus one. We have the is, which is luckily for us, just a simple translation of the equal sign. And we have three more than three times the smaller integer. So we have three times the smaller integer. This is the smaller integer. So three times smaller, which is basically three times x. And we have three more than, three more than, Hopefully this shows up and I'm not just wasting my time writing that doesn't show up in front of the camera. I think it does. Okay, it's gonna be so adding three. Okay, so when we translate this whole thing, basically the problem is two times x plus one is or equal to three x plus three, right? Because three more than three times the smaller. And if we wanna find both integers, so fairly simple. What you're gonna do in this case, you know, standard solving, you distribute this guy and then you solve for it, you're gonna have two x plus two equals three x plus three, and then you subtract, uh, well, let's see, I wanna move all the x on this side, so let's just subtract two x here, subtract two x, so I have x plus three on one side, two on the other, and then of course, you know, you're gonna subtract three, Subtract three, then you have x equals negative one. Okay, now that's fairly simple, but you're not done, right? Remember, context of the word problem is key. You wanna find both integers. So if x is negative one, so you have negative one and negative one plus one is zero. So you actually have negative one and zero as both the integer, and that's how you will find the answer for this particular problem. All right, so there you have it. That is the end of this video for word problem. That was one of the more challenging ones because I wanted to find a way that is either case by case or step by step just to help translate word problem because guess what, sad to say, we are gonna encounter a lot of word problems and I couldn't. So I figured out what was the best thing, the most bare minimum thing that we can do. And that was to give you probably some of the most common words that you will see that represents some specific thing. So we have, you know, the addition, which is add plus and more than so on and so forth. You have your subtraction, which is, um, you know, subtract, difference, less than, so on and so forth. You have your multiplication, product, multiply, multiple, uh, Division is quotient, you know, um, divide, split, whatever fraction that they are indicating. You have your variable, which is some unknown quantity that you have to understand the word problem and figure it out. And lastly, which was the first one I introduced, is the equal sign, which is is, was, were, any indication of that would represent that. So hopefully that helps you at least solve very basic or translate very basic word problems and then begin to solve them. Of course, once again, if your teacher, whatever situations wants you to translate on the verge of an English essay, that sucks. Anyways, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you in the next video.